You Talk Radio with Steve, Larissa, and Katie on the web at utalkradio.com. We have a great show for you today. I'm pretty excited. Are you guys excited? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Of course. I'm always excited to be in the studio with you guys. And since this is You Talk Radio, we got to give out our number is 1 855 You Talk. We want to hear from you. In fact, let's go to a caller right hey, now. Hey, before we go to the calls, What's I want to up? share some facts with you guys. Facts? Yes, facts. you know I'm the fact girl of the show. You're not fat. No, no, no. The fact girl. Like I like my F-A-C- fats. Like oh. F-A-C-T. Oh, oh facts, okay. You know. Fact girl. All right, yeah. fat girl. What's up? Did you guys know when you're trying to open packages and you get really frustrated because it's, yeah. it's just the packaging is horrible? That is actually called rap rage. It's an actual term for rap the- rage. Rap, yeah, rap like W R A P. Oh, like you don't hate rap music. Yeah, no, no. Oh, okay, yeah. so it's like when I get frustrated trying to open up a CD case or a new DVD. Oh, you know what? The, what yeah. sucks? Those blister packs where you have to use scissors oh, yeah. and like it those takes things. you like five hours to like yeah. open those things. And you're like hitting with the scissors, and you're like, come on! And then you cut yourself yeah. once you open it. Uh-huh. Oh yes. Well, yeah. I don't do that. I'm not that lame. All right. So, Katie, do you have any more facts for us? Okay. Do you guys like chicken nuggets at McDonald's? Ooh, I love. Of those. Well, here's a fact for you, Larissa. The okay. Chicken McNuggets come in four different shapes, each having its own name. Do you know what the four names for There's are? names for these shapes? Oh, I thought it was just me. random. No. It's just like, f- I thought it was food. I mean, come on, Now you're going to tell me that chicken nuggets aren't real chicken. Yeah. Well, let's not go there, <laughs> but you know. The four names are the boot, the bone, the bell, and the ball. Okay. The, Larissa, sit down, sit down. You cannot go to McDonald's right now. Okay. We have a okay. show to do. Katie, please save us. Get us out of this. Hugging can help reduce stress and lower blood pressure this helps to protect us from heart disease oh, oh wow nice. guess what i think it's time for a group hug All right. Yay. okay it's hard to do group hug on a radio show isn't it it is because nobody can see it and plus we bump into the microphones but listeners just imagine that you saw the three of us in a group hug in fact we'll have to take a picture of us doing a group hug and put it on our facebook page in fact yeah. if you need to relieve yourself from stress just go completely hug a stranger wait Absolutely. that might that be a bad might, idea <laughs> Oh, yeah. I kind of like that. Never mind. We won't go there. Some people might get arrested by doing yeah, that for like that's harassment. True. That's right. <laughs> Do you have one more, Katie? How about we talk about love? Love. love. So love has similar effects on the human brain as cocaine addiction. What? <laughs> you yeah. got to be kidding. Yeah. I guess that's why they say you're, you know, some people are just really stupid when it comes to love and they're blinded. because So you're kind don't. of like drugged out when yeah. you're in love. Well, I guess that's why they have all those songs like drunk in love. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Love, and uh-huh. So now it makes a lot more sense. So drugged on love. Mm-hmm. So the moral of the story, kids, is just say no to love. <laughs> oh, you know what? Maybe we need to get more serious and get to the phone. We've got Hannah on the line. Hey, Hannah. Welcome to the show. Hello. (laughs) I'm calling because um, I've been having some trouble at home. I just moved back into the house after graduating from school and um, just been having some communication and boundary issues with my mom. I feel like she's always treating me like I'm still a teenager, telling me um, what to do, how to do it, what to wear, what not to wear, and it's driving me crazy. Um, and I just don't know how long I'll last in this situation. It's going to last a really long that, your time. Your whole lifetime, <laughs> yeah. Hannah. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Uh, yes. Hey, my mother still calls me Stephen Richard. I guess I shouldn't have said that on air, but my legal first and middle name, you know, go to a restaurant talking to the waiter, the waitress, and she's using my first and middle name, Mom. The waitress doesn't care. (laughs) Have you had a chance to talk with your mom about these issues? I have. I told her that sometimes I feel like she's tried to control me and she becomes really offended, partially because in Asian culture, you don't really confront your parents or anyone older than you about things that you don't like. I totally understand because I'm Asian as well. So, you know, the respect is a really important thing. Hey, it's important to Italians, (laughs) too. I'm not Asian or Italian, but, you know, it's same thing. You got to respect the elderly people. Uh, Hannah, have you tried to talk to your mom about boundaries, establishing some? Yeah, um, we have attempted to um, set up some boundaries and have those kind of talks. Um, and actually, the concept of boundaries is a new one for her. But as soon as we 
agree to respect certain things and have limits in our relationship, uh, ten minutes later she's completely forgotten, and if I point it out, she gets pretty upset. <laughs> Sounds <laughs> typical. Do you actually have uh, locks on your door? Do you keep your door shut when you're at home so that you have some privacy? Yeah, we don't have locks on our doors, and if I installed one, I think she would be really, really angry. I know for me personally, when I was living at home, I, my parents would always like barge into my room, even <laughs> when I had the lo- doors locked, you know? And I always had to tell them, it's like, knock, can you guys please knock? Did they use bolt cutters? No, they didn't. But my mom was actually the worst perpetrator of them all because she just, <laughs> you know, there's a reason I closed the door. And, and so I understand sometimes it's really hard to establish those boundaries even with physical boundaries. I think what your parents are doing, especially your mom, is like, moms just want to be parents again. Now that you're home again, you're still her baby. and (laughs) Always will be. Will always will be. And I think when she doesn't get a chance to spend that much time with you, I think this is her way of just trying to like reach out to you and keep that connection with you as a parent. And I know that's a little bit hard to understand, but what I've come to realize is that, you know, your parents get lonely too and they really miss you even when you live in the same household and they miss that connection connection where they feel needed. Ah, needed. Mom and dad want to be needed. <laughs> we all want to feel needed. We do. Yes. We all want to feel needed. You know, one really good idea that you might want to try Sorry? is setting up a time to actually just hang out with your mom. She may just be hounding you and hounding you because she just wants to spend time with you. And if you maybe set aside a time, maybe wants every attention. week. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, even like once a day and just say like, hey, this is our time. Let's have lunch. Let's go get a pedicure, go shopping. And it might mean a lot to her that you actually are going through the effort of setting aside time for her. Mm-hmm. Then she knows like that's your time together. Otherwise, she's just trying to like clamor for time and just stealing any time and just barging into your time. So basically to have a dating relationship with my <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's yes. one way to look at it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. well, you know, my mom has been complaining that I never see her, I never do anything with her, and so finally I was like, okay, you know, I'll try to see you occasionally, and we can go out and do something, and she's like, okay, that makes me happy, that's fine. She just wanted a little time. And another thing is just tell your parents so they uh, the boundaries, just kind of maybe do some preemptive stuff, like tell them who you're going out with, what time you're going to be going, who you're, I mean, where you're going. So just kind of inform them about what's going on, the, the yeah, preemptive strike almost. So that they still feel like, okay, I know what they're doing, but you still have your independence as well. Yeah, because they just want to know about your life, like kind of like what Katie was saying. And so this preemptive strategy, it's almost like reverse psychology, like where if you tell them enough and, and keep hounding them about what you're doing, they might stop asking because you're telling them too much. (laughs) You're hopeful, Larissa, because with some parents, it's never enough. (laughs) Well, we hope some of these things will help you, you know, develop that relationship with your mom Mm -hmm. so that it's a healthier situation. She may never stop bugging you. (laughs) (laughs) Probably the truth. (laughs) But you can somehow manage it so that you're in a better place and she's in a better place and hopefully you'll have a better relationship. Hey, thanks for calling, Hannah. Thank you. Don't go anywhere except maybe to get some snacks. There's a lot more to come. Values-based solutions. This is Utalk Radio. Utalk. We listen. Utalk Radio.